We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that e-cigarettes have led to more than one million young people, aged between 14 and 17, in the US, becoming daily tobacco users. Batteries ignite, crafting aerosols from liquid scum to breathe and sniff and vape. Mint and mango, menthol berry, candied apples, sweets and cherry, tantalising tastes whose flavours run skin deep, as afternotes of heavy metals, bodily harm, and the gift of addiction linger on. This poem is inspired by recent research published in Paediatric which has identified how the 2017 rapid surge in sales of dual e-cigarettes affected usage among US youth and young adults. An e-cigarette is a device that allows you to inhale nicotine in a vapour rather than a smoke. They do not burn tobacco and do not produce tar or carbon monoxide, two of the most damaging elements in tobacco smoke. However, whilst using an e-cigarette, vaping, is less harmful than smoking, it's still not safe, with most e-cigarettes containing nicotine, which is addictive, and toxic to developing fetuses. Nicotine exposure can also harm adolescent and young adult brain development, which continues into the early to mid-twenties, whilst e-cigarette aerosol can contain chemicals that are harmful to the lungs. Similarly, e-cigarette use is associated with the use of other tobacco products, including cigarettes. Despite the danger that they can pose, especially to young people, e-cigarettes have had few marketing restrictions in the United States, And in 2017, there was a 40% surge in e-cigarette sales, driven by flavoured products made by the American electronic cigarette company Juul, leading the US Surgeon General to declare an epidemic of youth vaping. In this new study, researchers assessed two cohorts of youth and young adults aged between 14 and 34 years, one with baseline survey data in 2014 before the surge of Juul products, and the other in 2017 as the surge in Juul sales was occurring. Although the comparison of the 2014 cohort to the 2017 group shows a drop in the number of individuals who tried cigarette smoking, overall daily tobacco usage increased. This was led by a rise in daily e-cigarette vaping, particularly among those aged between 14 and 17. Among the 2017 cohort, this age group was almost four times as likely to progress to daily e-cigarette usage when compared to the 2014 cohort. Two-thirds of all new daily tobacco users were also found to be aged between 14 and 17, which translates to over 2,000 new underage daily tobacco users each day between 2017 and 2019. In 2020, the smoking age in the United States, including for e-cigarettes, was increased to 21, and the US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, also announced a ban on most flavourings in cartridge e-cigarettes, However, the policy did not include disposable e-cigarettes, e-liquids or refillable devices. Despite this limited ban and the increase in the smoking age, in 2021 there were still an estimated 1.7 million high school aged vapors with 85% using flavoured products. This parallels the 1990s epidemic of youth smokers in the United States before tobacco control policies were implemented, thereby pointing to a need for urgent additional action from the FDA. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. Batteries ignite, crafting aerosols from liquid scum to breathe and sniff and vape. Mint and mango, menthol berry, candied apples, sweets and cherry, tantalising tastes whose flavours run skin deep as afternotes of heavy metals, bodily harm and the gift of addiction linger on.
In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading Interstate Sonnet by Karl Markham. Karl Markham is a Chicano poet from Tuscan, Arizona. He earned his MFA from the University of Arizona and was Wallace Stegner Fellow at Stanford University. His poetry collections include Q. Lazarus, published in 2001, and A Camera Obscura, published in 2021. And Markham has been awarded fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Illinois Arts Council, and Tao's Writers' Conference. Markham taught for many years at DePaul University in Chicago and now lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he is the managing director of a small engineering environmental consulting firm in the Marcella Shale. Interstate Sonnet by Carl Markham A cigarette kiss in the desert, the windproof arc of flame sparks inside the speed in Buick, menthol, a break from the monotony of highway nicotine, most intimate of drugs. Make this mean sorrow or thermodynamics, whatever small gesture there is time for. Light another one, the vainglorious interstate dusk and ash, the long silver tooth. This shirtless abandon, this 90 mile an hour electric laugh, the edges of windshields haphazard chatter, the clatter of the hubcap and the thunderclap, the white hot retinal memory of your life as a Joshua tree. Permanence in the passenger seat, this long haul. This first drag, nothing like cinnamon, nothing like the iron taste on the back of your mortal tongue. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.